I have written extensively on uh, the relation of ethics to theistic belief, and particularly uh, the relation of what we call meta-ethics, the study of the epistemological and metaphysical grounding of ethics, uh, whether ethics is somehow can be seen uh, properly as grounded somehow in God. And uh, in doing that, I distinguish two realms. Uh, there are at least two realms of ethical theory to be accounted for. Uh, the more fundamental, in my opinion, and the larger is the realm of value, of what is good and bad, and at bottom, uh, are there things intrinsically good and intrinsically bad? Uh, I believe the answer to the, that question is yes. And uh, can, those, uh, be, uh, can facts of that sort be seen as grounded in God? And the, my answer to that is yes. Uh, I favor a theology in which, in accordance with the views of uh, Philo the Jew in Alexandria in the time of Christ, uh, St. Augustine, most medieval philosophers, and uh, a number of early modern philosophers, uh, God has the role in uh, ethics that Plato assigned in the Rep his Republic to the form of the good, that uh, God is the standard of goodness. In some sense, God is the good itself, and for a thing to be good, in, in particular, for a thing to be intrinsically excellent, uh, is for it to resemble God, imperfectly, of course, but resemble God in relevant respects. Now, that, uh, I think, uh, doesn't have obvious relations one way or another to Kantian ideas about autonomy because, frankly, Kantian ideas about e autonomy uh, are conceived primarily in relation to moral obligation, which is the other aspect of ethical theory that I try to see as grounded in God. And there uh, I uh, embrace uh, what I call a modified form of divine command theory, uh, according to which what gives uh, a moral rule, shall we say, uh, a moral principle, uh, the force of an obligation is God's commanding it. And at the most obvious level, that is not compatible with Kant's view. It's something that Kant would uh, deny, although <sighs> uh, the text of Kant on this, as on other points, is uh, not uh, simple to interpret, but I, I think I'm clearly not being Kantian. I'm certainly not trying to be Kantian uh, on that point. Uh, the, as to the epistemology of it, and in a way, I think, uh, and the, the question, how is it that we come to recognize something uh, as obligatory, or for that matter, as good, uh, is a question in the epistemology of ethics, and it's one with which Kant is very much concerned. And I think that uh, any putting it in terms of uh, uh, pure practical reason or in terms of uh, a single pattern of reasoning that he gives us, as for example in developing his conception of the categorical imperative, is far too simple. It doesn't uh, deal adequately with all the complexities of life. And uh, my view is that both as regards the good and as regards obligation, um, epistemologically, uh, we basically have to start uh, with uh, ethical practices as a social fact in which we participate, we begin participating in them very early as children. We learn how to participate. We learn uh, in interaction with other people in the process of, of learning the ethical part of a language. Uh, we learn how to form ethical judgments. We learn to form ethical judgments. We, re -learn, we learn to rely on ourselves in doing so. Uh, I hope not, not 
not altogether with, without self-doubt. We need to be self-critical about it, but uh, we learn to form ethical judgments. And in forming them, I think we learn to make ethical judgments, some of which we do not infer by a process of reasoning from other judgments, uh, but we make them simply responding to situations as we perceive them, and in so doing, I believe, we are responding, among other things, to our own emotions and desires and those that we perceive other people as having. And in doing that, we rely on a skill that we have learned in the course of learning to participate in the practice of ethical reasoning and ethical discourse. That's a, a very different epistemology of ethics from, from Kant's and a more social one.